Hi guys, in this video we are going to cover RB notification which has been issued recently and this one is relating to prepaid payment instruments. So broadly this notification it deals with prepaid payment instruments guidelines for interoperability. So this is a snapshot of the official heading of the notification. So you can see that this notification is titled as prepaid payment instruments guidelines for interoperability so this is going to be the theme for this particular video of today and this notification was issued in october 2018 and this notification is addressed to all prepaid payment instrument issuers system providers and system participants so in this video we're going to discuss about the prepaid instruments the concept of interoperability the impact of this inter interoperability and what are the different sets of guidelines which have been issued by the rbi for the purpose of promoting interoperability and at the end of the video we are also going to discuss some of the mcqs based on this particular topic so let's first understand the meaning of these prepaid instruments so these prepaid instruments or ppis they are a kind of payment instruments it means that you can use them for making payments so by using them you can purchase goods and services and the scope of purchase the scope of usage is very wide here and it includes financial services also and even remittance facilities so even if you have to buy some insurance products or you have to remit some amount to someone else you can use these payment instruments because you have the value which is stored on these instruments and you can use this value to either purchase a mobile phone to avail some services or to transfer that money to a friend or a relative now the value which is stored on these instruments it represents the value which has already been paid so it's not the value which is uh, lo loaned to you by the prepaid instrument this is the value which is already paid by the holder and this can be paid by either uh, depositing cash to a bank account or by debit card or by a use of credit card so ppis they may be issued as they may be issued as cards so there may be a kind of card in which you have already deposited money and they can be as a wallet or as a e wallet or any other form which can be used to access the ppi and to use the amount therein so they can have a varied uh, types of forms and the most basic purpose or most basic characteristic is going to be this now there are no just plain vanilla ppis there are a separate set of ppis along with their different sets of characteristics so if you talk about the different types of ppis there are three types of ppis one is closed system second is semi closed and the third is open system ppis now so closed system ppis they are the ones which facilitate the purchase of goods and services from that entity only so if you have your uh, prepaid payment instrument which is say you are keeping some balance with the amazon and you can only use that balance with the amazon for making payments for uh, or for making purchases from amazon then this is going to be a closed system ppi further it does not permit cash withdrawal and the issuance and operation of these instruments is not classified as a payment system and this does not require a prior approval of rbi next if we talk about the semi closed system ppis then these ppis they are used for purchase of goods and services including financial services etc at a group of clearly identified merchant locations so here the scope is not very narrow scope is not very wide but scope has some broad characteristics like you can make the payments through a clearly identified set of merchant locations so you cannot avail all the payment facilities there is a there is a separate panel of merchants on which you can use your ppis again these instruments they do not permit cash withdrawal next is open system ppis now these ppis they are issued by banks and they are used at any merchant so you can use them at any merchant for purchase of goods and services so you can go to any shop you can go to any market you can go to any website and make purchases using this open system ppi further banks issuing such ppis they also facilitate cash withdrawal at atms pos or through business correspondence now let's also quickly take a look at some of the other important points with regard to ppis 
now a company which is incorporated in india and which is registered under the companies act can issue and operate these ppis and that too after receiving authorization from rbi so for issuing these ppis like we have already seen on the previous slide that for one category the approval is not required but for the other category of ppis the authorization from rbi is required further no interest is payable on ppi balances further the loading and reloading of ppis so it means putting in money putting in the money in these prepaid instruments shall be through the payment instruments which shall be issued by the entities which are regulated in india and shall be in indian national rupee only so if you have to deposit money in your wallet then you can deposit it only in indian national rupees now let's talk about what is interoperability so this whole presentation this whole video is about interoperability of payment instruments so first and foremost we must be aware what do we understand by interoperability so if we just simply break this term it means inter and operability so if we talk about certain things certain system of things then if the the system of things is interoperable we mean that uh, the things can systematically flow between each of the components of that particular system without any problem so this interoperability is going to be the ability of a system or a product to work with other system or products without a special effort on the part of the customer so you can easily uh, be part of any kind of a prepaid payment instrument or you can be uh, having any kind of payment instrument and you can easily transfer from your funds from one payment instrument to other payment instrument so it this interoperability is the ability of a computer system or software to exchange and make use of information and in the case of ppi is this information can be easily transferred from one ppi to other set of ppis so if you talk about the interoperability of prepaid payment instruments then this means that a payment system can be used in conjunction with other payment systems so this means that ppi issuers the system providers and the system participants so all the stakeholders which are involved or associated with prepaid payment instruments in any sense they can undertake clear and settle payment transactions across systems without participating in multiple systems so in very simple terms what this means this means that if this interoperability of prepaid instruments this is true this is implemented in full sense then users the customers like you and me they will be easily able to transfer the funds between the wallets and also from their wallets to bank accounts so if we are having different sets of wallets with us we can easily transfer from funds from one wallet to another and even we can transfer the money back to our bank accounts so this is the clear purpose this is the clear definition of what is interoperability of prepaid payment instruments it means uh, they both all the payment instruments they can be easily converged they can easily be used with one another now let's understand what is going to be the impact of this interoperability of prepaid instruments and this we are going to see with regard to the customers the companies and other different stakeholders involved in the process so if we take a look at at the impact of interoperability from the user or the end customer perspective so till now a user who is using a wallet say paytm wallet he could not make a payment from his paytm wallet to another wallet say mobiquick wallet which is run by a rival firm now with this interoperability of prepaid payment instruments this is going to change the new rules are going to be implemented and the mobile wallet users they can easily transfer their money from one wallet to another and they do not have to download another wallet app if they already have an e wallet which is fully compliant with the kyc that is know your customer norms and if we talk about the merchant perspective then if a merchant who has signed up for one wallet with full kyc then he need not sign up for the others and he will receive payment from any wallet so if the merchant or the person from which you are making up from from which you are buying some goods or say availing some services and if that person is using say another payment uh, software maybe he may be using say mobiquick and you are using paytm then still the payment can be transferred from one wallet to another if the interoperability is made true so once interoperability is ruled, rolled out completely 
e wallets are going to be almost on a par with payment banks so they can be easily used to make payments to different parties without any hassles now let's come to the bit technical part so what are the requirements for achieving interoperability now according to rbi this interoperability is going to be introduced in a phased manner and this is already being introduced in a phased manner and rbi has already prescribed the steps or the phases in which this is to be issued so where the ppis they are issued in the form of wallets interoperability across the ppis shall be enabled through the use of upi or the unified payment interface so i believe we all are aware about this upi and if the ppi this is in the form of wallet then upi is going to enable the interoperability now if you remember we talked about how ppis they can be in the form of wallets or they can be in the form of cards now once they are issued in the form of cards then they shall have to be affiliated to the some authorized card network for the purpose of interoperability like say rupee visa or master card so once they do so they are affiliated to an authorized card network interoperability can easily be done PPA issuers which are operating exclusively in some specific segments for example there may be some PPAs like for meal gift etc then they can uh, they can also implement this interoperability if they feel like they have to implement it and uh, this mass transit system PPAs can also be there and they may also implement interoperability if they feel so the interoperability shall be facilitated to all kyc compliant ppi accounts so this is also very necessary rbi has ensured that kyc should always be there to make sure that the money which is uh, legal and earned through legal means it is only transferred and the customers they are genuine customers so that's why this kyc compliance is a very key requirement in the ppi interoperability So if you talk about the requirements for achieving interoperability through the card networks once more so this card networks they are allowed to onboard the ppi issuers to join their network so we have already seen that how the ppi issuers they need to be part of some authorized card network for the purpose of achieving interoperability and banks shall ensure that all new ppis issued in the form of cards they are of emv chip and pin compliant so ppis which are issued in the form of cards they have to be this emv chip and pin compliant now this emv chip technology is the latest technology and is often in news so this is the latest global standard for the card payments so this is an acronym which stand for europe mastercard and visa so they are the ones who have developed this technology and the emv cards they are chip based payment cards which have enhanced safety features so these cards they are more safe and they have been designed to prevent some fraudulent practices like card skimming or card cloning so this is the latest technology which is going to promote more safety of the payment instrument which is in the form of cards now if we talk about the requirements for achieving interoperability through upi so for this purpose national payments corporation of india or npci is going to issue handle it is going to issue a separate handle to the ppi issuers so that they can also act as a payment system providers in the upi as per its policy or the guidelines and for the purpose of settlement a non bank ppi issuer shall participate through a sponsor bank so if you have to undertake some settlement of transaction uh, on the ppis which are in the form of uh, wallets then this is to be uh, achieved by a non bank ppi through the sponsor bank now unified payment interface we are all aware is an instant real time payment system which has been developed by the national payments corporation of india if we use this particular upi system one can easily transfer funds from two bank accounts on a mobile platform so for the purpose of wallets also money can be easily transferred from one wallet to another through the use of upi so that's why this interoperability is to be achieved through upi now rbi has also kept the interest of the consumer like reconciliation consumer protection and grievance redressal this is also in the mind of rbi and for this purpose ppi issuers shall have to ensure that there is adherence to all the guidelines requirements of the card networks and upi 
in terms of reconciliation of positions at daily, weekly, monthly or more frequent basis as the case may be. So this has been provided that all the guidelines they have to be adhered to, requirements have to be met and reconciliation of the positions have to be done on a regular basis. Further, the PPA issuers they have to adhere to all the dispute resolution and customer grievance redressal mechanisms as have been prescribed by the card networks or the UPA as the case may be. So this customer protection and the grievance redressal this has been given paramount importance by the RBI and elaborate procedures have been prescribed in this regard. Now let's take a look at some of the MCQs which can be framed out of this particular topic. So first question, which of the following is are correct with regard to prepaid payment instruments? They facilitate purchase of goods and services except financial services and remittances. PPIs may be issued as cards, wallets and any such form or instrument which can be used to access the PPI and to use the amount therein. Both of the above or none of the above. So this we have discussed that PPIs they can be used for all the different sets of services including financial services and remittances so the first one is going to be incorrect so only correct statement which remains is option number b next question which of the following types of ppis permit cash withdrawal closed system ppis semi closed system ppis open system ppis or all of the above so this we have already seen that out of these three systems Open system PPAs are the ones which permit cash withdrawal. So the answer is going to be option number C. Next question. Which of the following would be the impact of interoperability of PPIs? E-wallets will almost be on par with the payment banks. Mobile wallet users don't have to download another wallet if they already use an e-wallet which is fully KYC compliant. If a merchant has signed up for one wallet with full KYC, he did not sign up for others, all of the above. So we have studied the impact of interoperability of PPIs and all these points, they are correct with regard to this interoperability. So the answer is going to be option number D, that is all of the above. Next question, in EMV chip technology, EMV stands for, options are electronic magnetic validation, Europe MasterCard and Visa, easy money value efficient magneto vista so this we have studied that this emv is an acronym for europe mastercard and visa because because they are the ones who have developed this particular technology which is more safer so answer is going to be option number b so friends these are the answers So friends, this is all about the recent RBA notification pertaining to the interoperability of prepaid payment instruments. So guys, this was all about our discussion for today. If you have any query, you can drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutap.co.in or if you want to know more about our courses, you can visit our website at www.edutap.co.in or in case of any query you want to get into touch with us personally, you can call us at 8146-207-241. So friends, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the same, share it with your friends and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And in case you wish to get regular updates from us, you can even join our Telegram channel, the link of which is given here, as well as in the description of this particular video. Now an additional benefit which you can get by joining this telegram channel is that you can fetch the PDFs of all the discussions which we are doing on YouTube through this particular telegram channel which is going to be very helpful for you in revision. So thank you friends. Happy learning.